Hey everybody, welcome to Bully and B. I'm Erica B. I'm Bully the Kid. Today we thought about talking about how we maintain or the importance of maintaining work, home, life balance. Um, not even just in marriage, but with any relationship, it's a big deal to not be giving more of yourself, in my opinion, to your job than you give to your person or your family, etc. Or your life. Some people value the job way more than they value other activities. Like they're fully enthralled by their work. They bring their work home with them. And then they wake up in the morning, the first thing they think about doing for good or bad is work. And uh, yes, this is kind of a your perspective, my perspective on how you balance out work and life. Now, this is not coming from any, we regular schmegular people. So um, just a little background. I've been a nurse for 13 years. So, and I've done the majority of my work at night. So that has caused a very unique set of issues. Um, not, I mean, having a job in general, working 12 hour shifts causes issues, but working at night, I'm sure has caused just different ones. Yeah, I've uh, been an engineer for what, 10 years now? 11. Somewhere in there. Um, and for the most part, five days a week, eight hours a day, clock in, eight o'clock, go home at five, roundabout, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, but five days a week, 40 hours a week. Um, that's been the norm, whether it be in the office, in person, which I spent the majority of my engineering career doing, or the situation I'm in now where it's uh, was working specifically from home, but now I'm moving back into a hybrid and further moving back into uh, the show up every day at the site type of work environment. Um, yeah, yeah, COVID definitely changed our outlook on, everybody's outlook on working from home. Mm -hmm. And so he, yeah, he got to stay home. I say got to, <laughs> it's my perspective. No. <laughs> It's my perspective. Okay. He got to stay right. home while I was pregnant in 2020 and going into hospitals. So I was the one like crying every day. God, please just keep me and my baby safe and not allow me to bring anything home to my husband and my other baby. Other baby. Like it was a lot. Yeah. So he was working from home starting then and he pretty much has been doing that since then. Mm -hmm by choice, which makes a difference, of course. Yeah. Um, so, Alan, how do you think that you do with maintaining work, home, especially now that work and home is kind of synonymous? How do you feel like that, your balance is? It's unbalanced currently, but uh, I've done the service and disservice of making my home so darn comfortable mm -hmm. that I don't want to go anywhere else. This is everything I need. I got, you know, all the amenities. I can cook while being in the meeting and presenting and stuff. It's just extremely convenient. And I don't have to wear, you know, business casual pants. clothes everywhere. I wear pants everywhere. You bitch. I don't have to, but I do. And what do they look like? Bucky's. Mind your business. Now. As I move forward and go back into uh, the work environment, it kind of took me a few, few orders of pants. Opportunities presented themselves for me to get back into the business casual world. Um, Mind you, this is a man who used to have friends of both of ours yeah. asking when he works because he really just looks like he's going to work to model. Yeah. So you boy, handsome boy, you, I'm, I be telling y'all, y'all ain't listening to me out here. Now shit. he wears hoodies with no shirts underneath yeah. and maybe pants. Shorts today. Here's that. Um, so to go back to the actual question, it is kind of unbalanced. I do I spend a lot more time here at the house than I do out and about in public just doing stuff. Um, so I'm making, I was about to say we like I'm in church. I'm making plans to get more involved with the the things that I was really, really into whenever we lived in the place that shall not be named again for certain reasons. But we'll get into that later. That's another episode. Yeah. So um 
I am a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, and I was very active in the chapter in the shadowy place. So uh moved out here and I don't have those friends that like the my friends are like me. So when I'm stupid, they're also equally as stupid or further stupid than I am. So it was very good. I haven't met anybody like that out here yet, but I need to because that's how I met them to begin with in the uh, shadowy area of the Pride Lands and stuff. So uh, that's going to be changing. I need to get back into recreational stuff other than just playing music in my room. I need to get back to bowling. I need to get back in the gym. I'm in the gym, but I have I have to dedicate myself to get back into it. So for me right now, work and life is unbalanced because I kind of have this little bubble that I'm comfortable in and I need to shake some stuff or get up out of there. Mm-hmm. So you? Uh, how do I feel like I'm doing with my work home balance? In this moment, not great. Let me explain. Uh, I picked up a couple extra shifts. Really, I've always had pretty high financial anxiety. This man has never let me be broke, so it's not even like a rational thought, but I deal with that kind of stuff. Like just anxiety in general of being waking up and being broke, that kind of thing. So I picked up some extra shifts because they were, they're usually not available. And so I have a project that I'm working on where I'm trying to uh, update my own like home space for myself. Like he has his own studio. I want to have my own little just chill space slash work office, craft room, that kind of thing. Um, I'll definitely be posting some stuff about that later, but I always feel obligated to fund it. I feel like there's never enough money. There's never enough money. That's true. In this in this yeah, economy, it's never enough money. there is never enough money. Mm. But also with a family of men, because I am the queen, I'm surrounded by men. A four-year-old and eight-year-old, they eat like grown men. That's my point. So I always just feel like we need a bigger grocery budget. We need a this. We need a that. And so the last, I would say, three weeks, I've been working a lot. And if you know anything about night shift working, I've been doing multiple nights in a row, followed by one night off, followed by multiple nights in a row, followed by... And it's just like, I need to sit down. So... You did it to yourself. I be doing it to myself. But... um, Outside of that, I am feeling pretty good about trying to create more balance. And that in itself takes work and planning and following through and not canceling plans because y'all, I love me a canceled plan. You will never hurt my feelings if you say, hey, girl, you love, you know, I really don't. Girl, you ain't got to, don't tell me nothing. Go go back to bed. My bond is still on. I don't even know why you don't, don't trip. Um, I'm trying not to be like that. But I'm also trying to be very intentional about what I choose to spend my time doing. Mm. Um, So I'll say that I'm also trying to do better with making memories for our kids or building memories for our kids, dragging this one out the house because he will live in one of his many options for a comfortable space. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is great because that means we've built a comfortable home and that's that's good. We got to pay for said home, which is where my mind immediately goes right back to. So it's kind of a vicious cycle. I've been kind of down on my self-care just because I've been working extra. So, oh, you working extra? Treat yourself, girl. Get the fries. Get the cake. Get the... Last night at work, I had an ice cream sandwich. It was Oreo, right? The outsides were Oreo. Don't, don't, it was delicious, but it was four o'clock in the morning. And I had a bag of gourmet popcorn that said extra butter on the front. It was $8. It was like a, it was just like this. It wasn't even like bigger than a right. The gift shop takes Google pay. So, and our gift shop at our hospital is open 24 hours. I just want to say that she didn't tell me any of this I don't until be tell- now. It was delicious. It was delicious. I'm lactose intolerant. So I'm also me. lactose intolerant, but I knew he was going to be out the bed because he had to go to work today, like in the office. Listen, what I do with my... Change. That's, that's why it's all weird to know. Change the cabin <laughs> pressure this month. No, no, no. That was this morning. That was this morning. I've since... You know, the walls is yellower than that. No, shut up. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true, everybody. Um, so in conclusion, my home, my work home life balance is a work in progress. 
Um, but I feel like I'm on the right path instead of just being like stuck. Cause there are times in life when I felt really just like I was in a rat race and missing things. And Mm -hmm. it's just very important to have time for me, have time for us, have time for our kids. I try to even do like one kid at a time some days. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like they appreciate that and I hope they appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I have the luxury also now that we are in what, what he is calling essentially the pride rock land, um, just being surrounded by family and friends. Yeah. It makes a huge difference Yeah, and having the support, especially thugging it. Like we were completely separated from everybody, which was great. Yeah. We were 600, 600 miles, probably five something. Either way, we were eight hours away from our nearest family member. Well, Ray. But he wouldn't. But he around. wouldn't never really home either. So, so. Um, as far as like a support team type family had to, had to foster that ourselves. We were yeah, it was just us. And once that second kid came, yeah, it did become what you called it—the Badlands, the oh, the shadow like where place. the hyenas are and yeah. the Lion King. That's what we're referencing. Yeah, be prepared. It was just like that. <laughs> like you just out there, everybody fending for themselves and. Anyway, yeah. so we're in a much better place, literally and figuratively now, and you know, the the balance is really coming into focus. Yeah, I think the only like real friends or people that we could actually trust with our kids or kid was actually the daycare manager up there, and he had a lot of else, teachers at he had a lot of teachers at his daycare like, that were like family to us. But yeah, but that was pretty much it. Like. It, yeah. So, although it is looked back upon with uh, kind of a bad connotation, it was really necessary for us to get out and get it by ourselves rather than depend on these people. So I feel like in a lot of our friend situations, our friend circles, where they have people to supplement them and they can get their quality time and have mm-hmm. somebody to, you know, watch and trust we didn't have that. So we had each other and we had to hold each other accountable for getting our own peace, however fleeting that was, because pandemic hit and everybody stuck at the house. Not her, everybody. but everybody stuck at the house. I know a lot of people who weren't stuck at the house. You you are you're a first responder and we appreciate Yeah, your essential and all that. Yeah. Uh now, I had a baby on me. All the time. Yeah, our four-year-old couldn't go to daycare because it was a very unique... I'm not saying it was unique because we had planned for him to go to daycare. He was born in August. Mm -hmm. And so now we're in the middle of this pandemic, no vaccines, no nothing. And so he was supposed to be able to go to daycare. And then his uh, our elder son's teacher quit because she was sick. Like, she was already sick. Mm -hmm. And so her doctor kind of recommended her to go ahead and just retire. And so I think she ended up retiring. So that meant that the baby couldn't get his spot because now they're one less teacher. And it was a, it was a mess. They did the best that they could with what they had. And we are forever grateful to Mm -hmm. them as a whole. Mm -hmm. Um, But that meant that the baby had to stay home, Mm -hmm. which is what I'm a firm believer. Nothing is an accident. So I really think that God allowed you to stay home so that you could be home. Because that would have stressed me out even more. Mm -hmm. And now I'm hormonal and just had a baby and just tried to die. and Blood pressure. That's another, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So that, that, that balance was way out of whack, followed by like postpartum depression and anxiety and snow. And Mm -hmm. it was a, it was a thing. And then solitude, isolation. Yeah. For him. Yeah. All I got. Do you see this? this him all day? On 10. He wants to talk to you all the time. So when I would come home and be like, okay, but I'm going to bed. I got to relay what the heck is going on. But I got to tell you I got to tell you And I get it, but I I was also like, I've been talking. And if we could have switched spots. I wouldn't have survived. I would not have survived. If you if we could have switched spots where you went to work and I didn't go to work? I wouldn't have survived. 12 Why? hours shift? No, no. I mean, like, if we could have switched spots where you were working uh-huh. and I was nursing from home, I don't know what I would be doing. You were doing your job, but mm-hmm. you doing it at work and I'm doing my job at home. That would have been, to me, I always thought that would have been ideal, but. You think so? I don't think you, you can be at be... the house like that. 
Me then, maybe not. Me now? Yeah, I don't... Me now is different. Then me now you, has been to therapy. You then and was I'm sitting in the car by yourself. And mental health matters. Let's take a break from mental health, everybody. <laughs> Shout out to the therapists out there. Nah, I was crazy. Yeah. Loony. <laughs> And me just being alone with my thoughts probably wouldn't have been a good idea. Yeah. So uh, I, get what, you're, also, I get what you're saying. We didn't have, like, we have cameras around the house, so I could check in and talk whenever she pulls up, I pull up. We could talk to each other. I didn't have that, so I had to go search for her. And she would be, what, in the driveway. Sleep? Sitting there, staring at your phone. Oh, yeah. That's called just, self-care. Just Doom sitting scrolling. in the driveway. Just sitting in the driveway. So I wake up. 6.30, 7 o'clock, got to start work, got to get ready, got to at least clock in by 8 o'clock. Usually I do 7.30, get my, my tea or my keto stuff together, get the breakfast popping off, and then I sit down, check my emails. By that time, it's 8 o'clock. She gets off work at 6.45. However long it takes to get there, should be like 7.15, 7.30, she pulling up. It's 8.15. I'm looking at Sir Hopalot. He's in the jumper. Getting oh, yeah, down. the baby in a jumper. Oh, he's getting down hard, tough. He's asleep, jumping up and down. It's hilarious. I still got videos. Uh, and she's nowhere to be found. What is happening? I popped the garage to see her eyes looking at me like this. <laughs> it was rough, man. Yeah, and then I just say, okay. You're okay. Close the garage. <laughs> Because I don't You're want okay. it. I don't want it with you. I don't know what you got, but you could keep it. You know? Yeah. But yeah, mental health is, uh, it matters. We all have our own story and struggle. Yeah. So. So I'm, I'm happy to say that that is a huge part of my work-life balance now. My work-home life balance is meeting with my therapist. And uh, I was just recently diagnosed with ADHD at 35. And um, honestly, it's been like a blessing because it's like, okay, I've, I've made a lot of things about me being broken and I ain't broken, but that's another day. That's another that's story. That's another story. Like we could mm. cut that if you want. No, it don't matter. It's real. Yeah. This right. is work life. You're right. Work life. Um, other life. thing, what would you like to see me balance better? I want you to actually like, physically take care of herself. I know you can't really get fingernails and all the stuff, but a pedicure. Go take your butt to a spa. Let somebody rub on you. A lady. And then steam, sauna, situation. Get your hair done. I don't know what you like you to do. got my hair done yesterday. Well, just, I, that's what I like to see you um, do. I just smacked this thing. That's I did stupid. it. I did it early. Um, Dale, you put yourself last and put us first all the time. Like it's a default for you not to worry about yourself and that's not okay. And I kind of feel bad because I am selfish. I'm like, nah, me. Also, y'all, if y'all can keep but up. also me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a thing. And you don't you it's don't true. do that. You've never been that way. It's true. We had a very good therapy session before we got married. We met with our friend and pastor. And um he said something that stuck with me all these years. Mm. And it was I am just as much responsible for not allowing him to take everything I have. He said, first of all, there has to be a giver and take in every situation. Otherwise, you wouldn't thrive. Mm -hmm. But the giver is just as responsible for not being run dry as the taker is responsible for, for not taking, sucking someone dry. And so sometimes, most of the time, it's like, I'm doing the things that I'm anticipating. I know what you, like, I've been around long enough to be like, I know what you're going to want to do. I know what you're going to want to eat. I know what you don't want to eat. I know, you know, I can anticipate needs. I'm a nurse. That's what we have to do. Mm. And I just expect that eventually somebody will want to anticipate mine. It's not first nature for me. We're very honest about that, though. So uh, when I do get a chance, about to go somewhere, when I do get a chance to do something before she can say it or I'm doing something to make her load at home easier, that's huge credit. And to her credit, she does say that immediately. 
hey, you did laundry while I was sleeping. I appreciate that. Then I slide right on back in. I ain't fold no clothes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey. That's fair. All right. Cool. Clo- folding the clothes hey. and putting them away is a five to seven business day transaction. Yeah, like you can't look. just only a sociopath washes all the clothes, folds, the- dries them, folds them, and puts them away in the same day. And they still got clothes on right now. So they eventually. Nah, I'd make start- everybody. I'm making everybody get naked. Man, get get you. Cover up with a paper towel. <laughs> I'm not doing laundry again. It's a never, it is a never ending thing. Also, but, dishes. Yes. Yeah, so, his thing that he does that is never ending is dishes. My thing that I do that's never yeah. ending is laundry. Kitchen care, basically. Keeping yeah, he keeps running. the kitchen going. Um, I'm usually doing part of, I have my part of the house. He has his part of the house. So, it works. It yeah. works. Yeah. And it's a work in progress every day. And I, I, I think it's important as far as balance goes for each other to be able to be honest about that. Like, I really hate, I really hate doing blah, blah, blah. I hate it. Yeah. And I might not, if he says he hates it and I don't hate it as much, then that'll be my thing. Like, I'm not, I have, like I said, three men here. We ain't traditional by a lot of ways, but I'm not taking out no trash. I see. Why am I taking out trash? I ain't taking out no trash either. (laughs) <laughs> there's a big one and a little one figure it out um there's just yeah it's that's a huge part of the balance too is as our kids grow they have to become part of the story that that everything is running because the other thing is we are raising potentially some people's husbands and they can't be slobs and we're not the like tidiest people ourselves sanitary yes but our house can be pretty messy we we be living and and what what don't do that again (laughs) don't say we raising people husbands girl shut up move on move on he has little babies i have adult children neither of those those lines are true but that's how we live our life go ahead you were going somewhere i'm sorry i sidetracked you I just seen uh, seen Ellis old. I seen Ellis like twenty. Ellis is our eight year old. I I seen him going on a, nine. It was a flash, and I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah. <laughs> I have a I have a brother that's seven years younger than me. Trust me, he's still a child. Yeah. But my own child, they could be the same age. Yeah. And that's how being a mom works. Yeah. My baby brother is my baby brother. Yeah. But my baby, whatever. Anyways, um. Things I would like to see you do more for yourself okay. or for your balance. Get up out this house. Go do the bowling thing. Go do the same thing. Go, like, put it on a calendar and get out. Because I'd be like, uh, you said you had somewhere to, ain't it? It's 832. Didn't you say you had to leave? Get out. I don't spend all of my time here. I do play for uh, a church, multiple churches, actually. It's not. That's work. You get paid. If you were going to do like Cypher, like you used to do, I wish that I would could. be different. Shout out if you're in the Houston area, you know somewhere you can go to <laughs> Cypher, please let him know. Put it in the comments, because... I'll be bored. Get man. him about it by house. <laughs> I like being here alone. <laughs> I don't be going. Listen, if I'm here by myself, I'm not going anywhere. He can see this on the cameras. Mm-hmm. We have each other on GP. Mm-hmm. I'm not going nowhere. I'm in my house. Mm-hmm. Quiet. I'll be upstairs. She be asleep. Boys be gone to their separate spots. Nah, I want you out. I mean. Get out. That's part of the balance. All right. Anything else? Uh, Work-life balance action. What do you want to do for a hobby? Never talked about that. Uh, so I'm actually, like I said, in the in the process of creating a space that is fully me and kind of learning what that means. Um, I am building a collection of books very slowly. I've got two books in the collection. Uh, one of them was gifted to me by a friend of my brother, and one of them was um, written by a friend of a friend. And I actually was able to buy it on Amazon, which is dope to just be able to do. We read Marriage Be Hard too. We read Marriage Be Hard already. Oh. 
Um, but yeah, so I'm, de- I'm definitely in the process of building that for myself, making my craft space so that I can create just whatever. Um, and I feel like that would be a lot of the hobbies that I want to do. And then, yeah, I do. I've got a spa day planned with a few friends already. Um, I do have, I have a pretty fairly recent pedicure, but it's not the most recent. But I also wear tennis shoes every day and essentially pajamas Listen, to work. you need pedicure. You're going through these tennis shoes, like, for real, for real. I know. She got sharp toes. But also. I had to say something. I ain't never... I ain't never scraped through a shoe in my life, and you done did it seven times. That's because of those shoes, but they're the most comfortable ones, and they're not ugly. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. It was definitely there. <laughs> Nurses have to go through shoes anyways because you're walking a lot. Should you be walking like this? Bye, Alan. <laughs> Wasting my free nights and weekends. Get off my line. <laughs> uh, no, um, I I definitely plan. I plan more things for us to do as a family because mm. I don't necessarily be wanting to do stuff by myself. But also, when I be like, "Hey, you want to go do this?" He'd be like, "No." I'm gonna start putting stuff on the calendar, which is fine too. We got a monster truck show we're going to go to Ooh, yeah. uh, next month sometime. Nice. Um, the holidays are coming up, so we got to figure out what we're doing for those. Thanksgiving's taken. Got it down. Christmas, I have no idea. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just, I think for me, it's more so about the experiences that I have with y'all and people that I deem important, other people that I deem important. Okay. So I do want to take maybe two steps back. I know you're trying to wrap it up, but ideally, what would your work schedule oh, look God. like? If you could if you could choose what your work schedule would be, what would it be? And I'll tell you mine. Go ahead. Oh God. Okay. I re- I now work 312. So I go in at work. I leave home around 545 to get to work by 645. And at night. Yeah, PM. And then I get home around probably 7 37 45 um and i do that three times a week i am required to do it three times a week i think in an ideal world i probably won't beat the flexibility that i have because i do get to choose my schedule okay so you choose your schedule for a month do you do the consistent schedule i go i have the school calendar in my phone i have your playing calendar in my phone like i have everything and then i just layer my stuff on top so it'll never be the same because if you're playing on a sunday night and a wednesday night then to the best of my ability i'm not gonna or if you're playing a sunday morning and a wednesday night then i'm gonna try not to work on saturday or if our kid has something on a Saturday morning, I'm going to try not to work on Friday. Like, it's just a, it's a back and forth thing. And these kids be out of school for the, like, I'm sure stupid it's for, it's reasons. not stupid. It's probably for holidays that we don't know about because mm-hmm. we live in America and everything overarching is so based in Christianity, but there are people who are not Christians and I completely understand that. And so I, it, it's just a lack of explanation as to why these kids need to be out of school. Now, if you told me it is for the Jewish holiday of this, or it's for the Muslim holiday of this, or it's for the Hindu holiday, of, I, that is absolutely fine with me. I just don't be knowing. Mm-hmm. And so it just sounds crazy that you're out. Like, why do you need a fall break? You just came back from a summer break. Also, there's Thanksgiving around the corner. And then you have a winter break. Mm-hmm. And then you have spring. Like, it's just like, no. Mm-hmm. What about the parents' breaks? What about my breaks? My needs? I need you to go to school. <laughs> um, I squirreled off your question. I'm so sorry. That's fine. I said ideally, what would you? Oh, what would my your... work schedule be? Mm-hmm. I guess can, if, you can if lock I could lock it in, it in, for in a I'd month. probably do like Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. Because that means I essentially have my whole weekend off. Because I don't go back until Sunday night. I can sleep every day. I need to sleep because I ain't got nobody in my house kid wives mm. to be running or mama you awake. I don't have none of that. Can mm. can I have a snack? Hmm. Um so I would probably do Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, just based on what we have going on now. Okay. What about you? If I had my ideal situation, it would be four tens. 
Mm. It would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Ideally. Interesting. So I got three days in a row to grind it out. And then I got the day that I can get my feet back together, play in church. And then Friday, just to make sure I'm tying up loose ends to get back to Monday. So ideally, that's what I would like that's to cool. do. But uh, and then you get like three days. It's like a Saturday in the middle of the week. I can get it. Yeah. So ideally, it's not it's not what I do. It's five days a week. But ideally, if I could, I would do that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Pull in seven. Clock out at like six. How do you feel like your balance has progressed through the ten years we've been married and almost nine years we've had? Like how does how has that had to change? Okay, so first year of us being married, I had no idea what it was like to actually have a job that meets ends meet. Just one job mm. by itself. Mm-hmm. Just one. Okay. I didn't know what that felt like. I'm used to having three. And I'm rotating shifts and having fun, and I'm out there in the public mingling and such. And working for tips. Yeah. So I'm. Which I I'm would die if I had to work for. Like I just be. I would starve to death. Cause yeah. I'm gonna look at you like this. You got to have that sway, baby. Got to get up and then you know what I'm saying sprinkle a little something on it. You feel me? <laughs> uh, so Dude, don't you see I'm busy? No. Do I? <laughs> Wasn't I just at this table? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I would eat ramen noodles. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was the first year. So I was just a busybody, but I didn't know where to go because keep in mind, we we're in the shadowy place and we just got there and we just got married. It wasn't we shadowy then. It was, but it, I, we were lonely. It wasn't bright and sunny. Okay. So Fair enough. Uh, didn't have the connection, didn't have the network. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... I didn't even have the Sigmas until like that second year. Mm-hmm. So I was just going, my friends were at work. I was just hanging out with them. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not, but it's not the best. It's not ideal. What if I'm beefing with somebody, you know? Then you then you have 10 more hours to unbeef with them. Hello? <laughs> it's not how it works. That's how healthcare works. <laughs> Nah, it works. You're gonna come start this IV for me though. I don't care. Okay. There's there's no IVs on machines. All right. So uh there's that. Now skip ahead ten years to present day. I'm the most secure in my role in this family right now. I know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I'm pretty confident in every decision I make. I do run it by if there's something that's not staged and not well planned out, I do tend to run it by just to make sure I'm not crazy whenever I make decisions. And um, who I am today is a full 180 from who I was year one. Still the same mechanics, but what I thought a relationship would be, I never thought I'd have kids. Never thought I'd have a kid. I was doing good just to snatch her off the market. And I had a baby after that first year. Yeah, our first kid was born about a year and a half after we got married. I So it wasn't a long time. I didn't know we I could have ourselves. kids. So I'm gonna keep it completely yeah. funky with you. I no, for sure. Ain't never slip no. up. So that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh no, it was definitely it I mean of course a requirement. It was a requirement to shift. Because you go from me by myself to me married to me protecting me this providing meat sack. <laughs> me protecting this meat sack because that's all he was. He's just a chubby baby. Oh my god! <laughs> what? I don't know what to do with this thing. I ain't never changed a diaper exclusively. I, uh, <laughs> my line of work requires that I change diapers, so that's not an issue for me. But for it to be res- my sole responsibility. Like, oh, I don't get to bring this person back and give it back to nobody. That was different. Yeah, it was different. Um, like, so the balance had to shift, and I was terrible at it at first. Because I went from working, I would work four shifts a week, every week, just because why? Why not? They ain't got nothing else to do. Work them back to back. Be like, okay, well, 
I can, yeah, I can, yeah, I can pick up extra. I, yeah, I can come in for this. Yeah, I can come in for that. And that immediately had to shift. Um, and then, of course, paying for daycare means that the whole mindset had to shift. And when do you take care of yourself as a new mom? Like, trying as a new mom, married. So you're trying to, to satisfy all these different de- levels of demands to be the wife, the mom, the worker. And yeah, back burner is me easily. So I think as our first child got older, I was able to kind of see the light. And then we decided to have a second kid. And that was like, you would have another one today. Please yeah, don't. I would, Please but don't. that's my... Anyways, we ended up having a second kid and that kind of started over a little bit. And so now I, maybe you couldn't pay me dollars. I can see the light for real because one can help take care of the other one. Like the responsibilities are becoming less upon us. He's up there doing it right now. I would never, (laughs) I couldn't, I could not go back to having little babies. We have friends that are having little babies and we will definitely be holding them. Oh, I'm going to hold that baby. With your permission, of course. Absolutely consent. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we'll be fully vaccinated and wearing masks and sanitized and all that. Talking to you, Destiny. (laughs) <laughs> and anybody else that god blesses it ain't us oh, it's surgically is. impossible praise him um but yes i think that the balance has improved significantly as i do prioritize myself and as the guilt that i used to feel doing that subsides because it used to be real guilt yeah she would be real sad before she asked me, hey, would you mind if I go over here and uh, is, is it okay if I... If it ain't too much, please, son. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a morsel of time just, by myself can, can, in the some, bathroom, if that's okay. <laughs> you, got some, you got some of that independence. You, you got know? a little bit of that freedom. <laughs> Like, yeah, now this is all self-imposed. I have never done anything. No, he would feel. be like, "Go, bye." But he would make these little jokes, and they're jokes. But I couldn't. He doesn't do that anymore. Mm-mm. She never take it like I wanted to be. So nah, I'm about to cry day. and start yelling, and cut you out. First time she did that, I was like, "Okay, mm-hmm. we don't joke like that." Okay, no, we, we don't play. Cause I will mm-hmm. literally be like, "No, if I'm never mind, I'm not going." And that's not the intent at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. God's still working on me. I'm trying to get better. If you would just go do the things that you want to do. I am doing the thing I want to do. Yeah, now. But if you would just get out the house and go do what you want to do, then it wouldn't feel so bad when I do it. But I'm going tomorrow. Okay. That's that's what I like right there. That's the response I need. Because if you'd be like, oh, where you go? Then I'm just going to be like, no, I'm not going. You have it on the calendar. I have it on the calendar. I play in, I play music. I don't need to go to an orchestra. I'm cool. I did that. You have fun. Be black. Take pictures. Be black. Take pictures. I will. Mm-hmm. Anyways, anything else? I don't think so. It's a pretty good podcast. Talk about a lot of stuff mm-hmm. in the same over umbrella discussion. It's yeah. pretty good. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching, joining us. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, whatever mm-hmm. y'all wanna. Oh. Wanna wanna so, do if you so, wanna see more of us. Oh, you're on the uh, we're gonna, you're gonna see more of us either way because we're gonna throw ourselves at you. Yeah. And uh so there's that. You see your video podcaster? You see that? Oh cool. All right. All right, like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thank you. All right. I've been bully the kid. I'm Erica B. <laughs> <laughs> Something's not right with you. <laughs> <laughs>